Okay, so if you were to separate the components of rotation and oh, Jack's up. Uh, separate the components of rotation and hinge. We just looked at, at rotation alone, and we looked at what rotation does to a blade. Just look at the blade angle. Nice and positive, it's negative. It sweeps through the whole suite of blade angles, right? Right? Okay, you know what I mean? Okay, if you just hinged, vertical, right? Beautiful, but oh so hard. <laughs> so your blade angle, if we work with the assumption that, or the premise that a vertical blade is going to move your boat fast uh, forward most effectively, that makes sense, versus this. Then we should just hinge. All we should do is hinge. We should make it a straight blade too, and just hinge. Okay, but uh, the, the economy of motion isn't there, it's too hard on your body. Rotation is way, way stronger. So my suggestion is, how to integrate the two. So if you integrate them, if we take the, the, the thought that when I put the blade in the water, if I can keep this blade at a constant angle for just a fraction, the water that's there will have will uh, purchase better than if I put it in and it moves through an angle right away. If I go in and move it through, it won't purchase as well as if I go in and keep it at a constant angle for just a little fraction. That make sense? Okay, does that make sense? Mm -hmm. okay. okay, so how can I do that? Okay, well if I if I have my rotation in my hinge, the question is how do we sequence those in order to make make that paddle move most effectively? So if I go in right down there, if I start with my hinge, oh this works better on the or but you're a standing bit on the if I start with my hinge, that blade angle stays consistent for a fraction. Start with my hinge. Okay, so, and then just follow through, okay? The shoulders are going to rotate through automatically. You're not going to end up just hinging just because you thought of, of rotating, of hinging first. So just a little bit of hinge. Versus if you look at the opposite, if you rotate first, look at the blade angle. Versus, okay, so it's very common when you freeze frame people, you'll almost always see um, this and then this. The reason being is that this doesn't create as much resistance. We are stronger in a rotational way, plus the blade isn't as, as creating as much resistance. So there's two, two re really good reasons why our body will, would rather do this. It is way easier on us. And I was talking about a little bit of initiation, just the sequencing of it. So, I, and I'm really exaggerating the hinge, which I shouldn't do because that's that's abnormal. That's that's me. Okay, so just a little bit. When you start coming forward, you can think about the hips coming through and just sitting up a little bit, and then it just uh, keeps the blade at a more effective angle. If you do video, which is awesome, frame by frame by frame by frame, you'll commonly see this. And what happens is that people will sit up. I call it sitting up as an afterthought. That's me, that makes it sound like there's intention, but there isn't. Uh, it's that they come down, and one of two things happen. Is one, it is an afterthought. Oh, coach wanted me to sit up, so they sit up. Or that they're down here, and they're like, oh, I don't have very much room to actually take my blade out of the water. I want to be tall up here, because it's easier to exit. Or they start to take their blade out of the water by getting taller. I call that exiting by getting taller. There, <laughs> and then the blade starts to release. That's three things you can look at in your paddlers. Is are they actually keeping their blade in the water till the end of the stroke? And uh, when they do their sequencing, are they using it to actually to exit their blade? Are they using their hinge to take their blade out of the water? Are they using it as a last minute forgot? Or are they using it to help lock their blade up? Okay. 